Hi everyone, Cheryl here. This is video 23.1, my very first video of the new year. I've only got one item to show you, which I know, I feel like I'm being, being a bit of a skin flint. However, there's something else I want to show you as well. And what I wanted to show you is something I showed you last time, but only on a photo. If you remember my video 22 point, I know I'm really having to think now, was it 22.3 or 22.4? Did I get that far? It may be just 22.3. Forgive me if I'm wrong. I showed you an image of a joyous hat, which I didn't have on my person. Um, and I said, I'm not that happy with the hat, so I'm going to do it again in the actual yarn that was recommended in the pattern. And here it is. I hope you can see that well, but if not, I'll just take a picture of it and I will send it. No, I won't send it anyway. I'll put it there. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Right. The very first Joyce hat I made in Cascade 220, which I love. I love Cascade 220. But when it said, the pattern said five millimeter, millimeter needles, I can't talk now. Um, I knew that was going to be a problem and it was, I felt it was too loose. I mean the hat certainly looked fine, but I wanted to use a smaller needle with it. This hat, there's the leftover, it's crunk, saw wool, it's recycled wool. How well can you see that? Anyway, I'll read it to you. It says, reborn wool, recycled. Um, your contribution to slow fashion. This hand knitting yarn has been made with the utmost care and love from 100% post garment recycled textiles. The yarn has been made to be kind to the environment by diverting old clothes that were destined for landfill without the use of any dyes or harmful chemicals and very little water. And it's made with 65% wool, 25% polyacryl and 10% nylon. This yarn does recommend 5mm needles, which I believe Cascade 220 does as well, but I suppose it depends what you're knitting with it. With hats, I'd definitely go for 4mm needles with that. Yeah. Anyway, what I did different, what, what I was telling you last time about this hat was that the pattern was coming up short. So I thought, well, the first thing I'm going to do is increase the rib because it's a fixed brim. You attach it to itself because um, you start with a provisional cast on and you work four inches, which with this, I think it was 24 rounds. Um, and that was on five millimeter needles. Bear in mind, I didn't enjoy it because of that. Um, this, I worked the brim in four millimeter needles and I did 30 rounds. And now I look at it and I think it's too big. But basically they wanted you to work four inches and I worked five inches. So, however, I did do this in four and a half millimetres. Let me tell you something interesting. With the Joyce hat I made with this, I, I was following the written instructions and that's very important you know this. And I did rounds one to 15 and then it says repeat rounds one to 13. But I was thinking this is really coming up short. So I did the extra two rounds to make it 15. I was thinking, it's still too short. Then I, I initially did the um, crown decreases, which is basically half and half and half and half until you get to a certain amount. And I was thinking, that's too sharp a decrease. There's no resting rounds. I don't like it. And the hat's still short. So I frogged that up until the beginning of the crown decrease. And I did my own. And I basically I made it up on the spot. And I can't remember what I did, but I knew I needed to look at the chart for the next one. Well, here I was doing this, and I decided I decided to do... No, I hadn't got that far yet, sorry. I was thinking, oh, well, do I want to do it to round 13? And then start the hat decreases, or oh, 15. So my idea was to look at the chart, take the last row of the chart pattern I would be doing, put that into stitch fiddle, and then figure out where I'm going to do the decreases and how I'm going to do them. Are they going to be knit two together, purl two together? And how many am I going to do? Because I'm not going to do as many as in the original pattern. I'm going to do fewer of them so I can have a, a shorter, not shorter, a longer um, 
crown decrease, which is what I achieved there. And in this case, what I did, oh, that's when I discovered the chart has 18 rounds to the pattern. The written instruction only has 15. So on my PDF, what I did was write, a, I put a little note on it. You know, you can write notes on PDFs in software, in Adobe. I, I, I wrote around 16, 17 and 18. I translated it from the chart into uh, the written instructions. And I put them just like a note pointing to the end of the written instructions. Just so I'm aware that if I come to it again, it's there. And what I did with this, I did... What did I do? I can't even remember. That's terrible, isn't it? I did a full, full round at full 18 rounds. I did rounds 1 to, 5, 1 to 13. And then I did the crown decreases. But I did them a certain way. And I've written, um, yes, I have written them down. And they look very good. But now I'm looking at it thinking, that brim's too big. I would do it differently. So how would I do it differently? I would definitely do the 4-inch brim. That's enough, right? Bear in mind, you know, it's a... It's a it's a rollover brim when you attach it, so that's where the four inches comes from. Then I would do two rounds of the 18 round pattern for beat. Okay, I'll do two lots of that. Then I would do one prep round before I start decreasing. And all I'd do for that basically is knit the knits and pearl the pearls. And then I would start on a different down crown decrease. So I'm going to have to rechart it to end with 18, then knit, knit, pearls, pearls, and then figure it out it won't take me too long to figure that out but that's what i'm going to do and that's what i will put in the description box of what i did this time what i will do next time um but i will write what i did this time as well in case you buy that pattern you're you're, you're a, a read of text rather than charts yet yeah, you'll go wrong uh, because of that that i don't know why it was cut off that was so strange but anyway that's that so normally I do two hats of a new pattern that I've not done before. Well, I'm so eager to do a third one and this that's why it's just I want to get it right. So if I do this pattern in the future, I know exactly what I'm going to do next time. So that's that. That's for the Joyce hat. And it's a lovely hat. Just a different feeling yarn. Oh, by the way, this yarn feels incredibly heavy. It feels almost like cotton, you know, when it fit working through your fingers. My hands were getting fatigued. So I just thought I'd share that bit with you, just so you're aware. I'll put him down there. Where am I going to put him? Will he fit there? No. He'll fit there, but that's it. You'll see him when I show you. Right, what I'm going to show you... Oh, I'm boiling all of a sudden. I am in my craft room to be. My husband has finished both units of my new bookshelf. Uh, the only thing is, he's not... Um, secured them together he's not bolted them together he's clamped them but the reason why he's clamped them is because in a couple of weeks there's going to be some work going on in the room down below and the electrician may need to come up here into this room or even in the hallway just down there we don't know yet and disrupt things so there's no point in even thinking of moving in but what I'll do, I'll take you off the shelf and basically show you around at the moment. Now, please excuse the mess. My husband's tools have not been put away yet. Um, the room will be vacuumed and cleaned, but not yet. But the tools will definitely be put away before the electrician comes. And then we'll just wait for him to do his stuff. And then I can start moving in. Hi, we're back. I'll just take a couple of steps back here so you can see the whole unit. And see how it interlinks here. I'll I'll get closer so you'll actually be able to see the clamps. But it's almost ready, and those squares there will fit one of those IKEA boxes in there. I, I plan on getting the fabric ones, and the reason why the reason why is so that I can um, fold them up if I don't actually need them, rather than the rigid plastic ones. Um, also, the other reason is because after a while, plastic gets brittle, and sometimes they break. So I don't want that, but I do want the fabric ones because you just unzip them and fold them up and then you put them on the shelf, don't you? If you don't need them, so that's the idea. Anyway, so things that are squirrelled away in various places in the other room, which is like under the bed, in the drawers, in the wardrobe, they can all be on here. So as you can see, there's clamps here and the reason why is because these shelves interlink 
That is part of the shelf here and it's going to get screwed or bolted or whatever it is going to do with it. And same there. Um, same there. And here. I can't see from under. I have to lay on the floor for that. I don't know what you can see. But uh, it's the same there. So. We've never used that fireplace. In fact, I don't even think it works. Well, there's no fire in there, actually. It's just a space. But this room used to be my younger son's bedroom. Um, there's the desk of his that I'm claiming. I'm using that one. It's bigger than my desk in the other room. Yeah, we're keeping the back cur black curtains. I don't care. <laughs> and this is the original bookshelf my husband built, either in our first house where we lived together or our second house we lived together. But you can see the difference in quality between that one and that one. He's learnt a lot since then. Uh, plus, that was actually designed on computer software. He did that himself. And um, he sent off the um, some part of the computer software, the export bit, whatever. I don't even know what it's called. But he sent that off to a place in Bristol and they cut the wood and then as a husband assembled it. So this is the very first one he built. And it's incredibly dusty right now because of all the sanding that's been going on. But that'll all be cleaned up. And... I'm going to have the desk here and it'll curve around there. I want it facing the door because I don't like people creeping up on me. <laughs> I don't like it. But it'll be enough for the door to open, that's where it'll be. But also it's here so if my husband needs to go in the loft, he can. The ladder can come down and it won't interfere with the desk and I won't have to move anything. But that's the idea. <laughs> I hope you like that little uh, tour of my craft room to be. Um, when that room's completely empty, the room I used to be in when I, where I filmed my uh, videos in the very beginning, when my youngest son and his wife come, they'll be able to stay in there because it's now a bedroom as it should be. And there's an ensuite shower room for them to have. So, yeah, it's going to be great. It shouldn't be too long now. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. I think I've said quite enough. And next time, when I show you something, hopefully I'll be in this room proper. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? All right, everyone, I hope you had a wonderful holiday and New Year. And let's hope this year is going to be smashing for everyone. All right, take care, everyone. Bye.